All right, everybody, this is the Always Be Cool podcast, hanging out with Bobby Kerr, actually solo without my buddy, my co-host Darren Copeland today. Instead, I'm hanging out with a rock star, phenomenal businesswoman here in Southern Missouri. I've got Michelle Cantrell, broker owner of Cantrell Real Estate. We're going to talk about all things real estate today, about your team, about the market, and really what sets you and your, the rest of your team apart from everybody else. So how you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have you ever recorded a podcast before? I have. Yeah? Actually, many. Yeah. Cool. Like local people here in Southern Missouri? No, or? no, agents across the country, you know, they'll do interview other agents in other markets. And so I've, I've done 12, I'll probably, I don't even know how many, several of those. I'll say 12, that's a very specific I, number. I know, I started saying 12, <laughs> I don't know where 12 was coming from. Maybe subconsciously I know how many, yeah, but probably. I've done a lot. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I guess, you know, when you're a, a rock star like you and you perform at such a high level, a lot of people want to talk to you and have lots of questions. So I think this is a great opportunity to share some of the things that, really sets you and your team apart on your level of experience as well as your, your actual education and knowledge of, of what's happening in the market today. Okay. So why don't you just take maybe give a 30-second pitch on what the Cantrell real estate team is all about, what makes you great, and then we'll dive into some more specific questions. Great. Um, I have a great group of people. That's what makes us great. Um, we're very um, learning-based. We stay really ahead of the market. We have a group of, there's, I think there's 42 of us right now. Wow. And even though we're a brokerage, we call ourselves a team ridge um, because we're really yeah. one big real estate team. And so we opened our own brokerage last year, but we're just a team that really works well together, that communicates really well. Um, we're big marketers, and so we do radio, TV, billboards, everything like that, which helps us get in front of, we're connected with, um, celebrity endorsements through a marketing group I work with, Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. Oh, yeah. Um, Bobby Bones on the radio. Our jingles sang, sang by um, Gary Lavox from Rascal Flats. Oh, wow. And Sean Hannity on the radio show and, and on his. <laughs> so we have a lot of celebrity endorsements. And why that's important for our clients, we're connected through all of those celebrities nationwide through their websites. And so we get a lot of people coming in. Um, from outside the market, which are higher price point markets, and we get those people first. We can help our clients get the most for those properties. So it's almost like um, the, the celebritizing of, of your team because you are you're not only so great at what you guys do, but being able to be affiliated with other rock stars, like actually with real rock stars real too, rock stars, with the yeah. Rascal Flat Swing and your jingle. But I think it's important to understand for, for clients looking to work mm -hmm. with you or your team members that – you know, you've got some true professionals and nobody, no team in the world that's truly professional and out to serve others is going to be associated with those other things that you're just discussing. So I think it just solidifies mm -hmm. kind of your expertise and your knowledge in the, in the business. Yeah, they won't partner with just anyone. You right. know, you have to be in the top in your market. And one of the best things that comes with being a part of this group is that I get to be connected through all the other top performing teams across the mm -hmm. country. So say if I want to try some new technology, I just ask in my group and there's someone who's already tried it. And if someone tries something and it's great, like it's a lead, uh, a new lead source or a new program, they'll say, you have to try this, this is amazing. So it really stays in front of the market because as you know, technology changes yearly. Oh, it does. And if you just have the same technology that you had even five years ago, you're, it's outdated. So you have to stay on top of that. And it's a lot to, to do. It and is. that's my job on the team. I'm more the visionary. I stay in front of marketing, lead sources, and um, you know that's that's what I do basically, and bring opportunities to the team. So we're constantly growing and evolving, and um, we're just staying in front of it. I love it. I love it. So, tell us a little bit about you and your actual, your particular, your mm -hmm. your individual background. What got you into real estate? How long have you been part of this crazy, crazy <laughs> yeah. game? And why do you still love it? And why do you love serving people? You know, I've been in it so long, I don't remember what got me into it. No, 30 years. 30 wow. years of real estate. So it's really... It's amazing. That's amazing since you're 37 years yeah, that's old. That's right, I mean, right. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Um, but it's really the main career of my lifetime. I mean, this is, at this point, I should be an expert at it, right? If I'm still sure. in it. I've seen the ups and downs. I've been through recession. I've been through 9-11 when everything stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just so many turns in the market. And I can say when I first started... You know, I was a real estate agent. Went out there, put a sign in the yard, did what everybody else Knocked did. Knocked on doors. Sell, yeah, sell, sold houses. Yeah. Now I consider myself a business person. And after the last recession, 2007, 2008, I realized I wasn't a business person. Mm. I was a real estate agent waiting for that next deal. Tran just transaction-based almost. Tra yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so after that, I um, 
I started working with Keller Williams. I became a team leader. I traveled around the country. I went to a lot of training, coaches training. I worked with top teams in other markets. And then I started my own business, launching and relaunching market centers for Keller Williams. Okay. And I just did that independently. I would work for them maybe six months, maybe shorter, and just you know get into the books, coach top teams, um, just fix the fix. I was a fixer, and then yeah. I would hire my replacement and leave. And so I did that for about three and a half years, and I learned so much. I learned so much about technology, how to build big teams. I worked in markets like um, Seattle with one of the top agents. Well, he was the top agent in the world then. Wow. And then I worked in San Diego and San Francisco, just all across the West Coast and all those big tech markets. And I just learned a lot. And I, as I coached them, um, I learned even more what worked, what didn't work. And so then I decided it was come, time to come back and start my team up again. The recession was over, things had recovered, I was so learning base, and I became a business person during that time. And um, I came back and started my team, so it's been six years that I've been back running the team. And within three years, we hit 100 million, wow. and no one had ever hit 100 million in our market. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> and um, we've just built our team um, off of that, and we now, are over 150 every year. We just kind of increase as we go. We're already at over 140 this it's incredible. year. incredible. Yeah, we do over, we're over 500 transactions already. And and um, really just, I just want to, I want it to be fun. And so I'm never going to have a 200, 400 person brokerage. Sure. We're just a big team, a big team that's profitable. And that's hard to find sometimes. People, you know, spend so much money on brokerages. I noticed that when I was training around the country that a lot of these brokerages didn't make any money. Because they mm -hmm. were really just sustaining what you know what they did, sure. and so I feel like we kind of broke the code, and we have a, a great brokerage, and um, everyone knows the market shift is coming and is already starting. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel confident that we're going to be great during that time, um, and my agents feel confident, and we're good. I love that, and I want to point out. I've heard you say the word team probably 10 times in the last <laughs> 90 seconds. Yeah. And that's really, really important because you yeah. led with the conversation of saying, we're nothing without our team. We are great, Bobby, because of the team. Right. And I think that sets the, the precedent for everything we do, right? And, and especially in this industry when many others, whether you're a, a, you know, have a real estate team or a mortgage brokerage or insurance or inspections, whatever it is, if you're solely focused on transaction-based, and it's just about getting this transaction done so that I can sell this house or buy this house or represent a buyer, then everything else doesn't really work right? because it's so focused on money instead of the relationship. So maybe discuss a little bit about how you took the ownership of teaching and coaching others on the value of relationships and how that sets up everything else for success. Right. I've worked with probably three or four, four different coaching companies, mm -hmm. so I learned something different from each one. I believe in coaching. So wait, you're saying as a top performer, it's still important <laughs> to be coached by other top performers? Yes. Absolutely. And, and I've been a coach, and yeah. I coach other top performers. And um, I'm not coach. Well, I'm coaching like one person right now, but I coach my team. And it's just a choice. You know, coaching is great money, it's, and I love it, but it's really a focus on where we are right mm -hmm. now and focusing on my agents. And, um, you know, that being learning based is the most important thing that you can do in any business. You need to be coached. You need to have someone who can see the holes in your business that maybe you can't see. Yeah. And that's just been so important for me to be a coach and to be coached. And I do that with my team. And I can't remember your question that you started out with. Well, we basically, you're, focus, yeah, you're, you're, part, you're, pro, you're focusing on relationships, relationships, right? And so part of that coaching, whether you're being coached or whether you're coaching others, you're just teaching and instilling the value of okay. what relationships means. Yeah. We, if you're transactional, you don't work on our team because we I are relationship-based. And it's very obvious when someone isn't. When I was with Keller Williams, you know, um, we really use the DISC assessment. I don't yeah. know if you use that. We use it and, in our company. Yeah. Yeah. And so they really, the high Ds were who they wanted. Mm -hmm. And I found that doesn't work very well in my team. Interesting. And most of my agents are high S's which means they're steady, yep. they like um, to communicate, which is our core value is communication. And I don't, we, we have too many transactions that I can't be a broker that's taking complaints from people where their clients are, are complaining about not communicating. Mm -hmm. So we instill that in them how important communication is. And so that high S personality, 
they're steady, they like people, they care, they communicate well, and I mean, I, that's who I hire. We could have a whole conversation <laughs> about the DISC profile yeah. assessment. I love it. Yeah. You know, what it, I think it d depends on the type of um, position, right? Mm -hmm. So like for agents, you really need that care and connecting, you know, someone who needs a little more stability. I, I love that approach because like for us, if we're gonna bring on, let's say loan originators, we like high D. Right. High D, high I, yep. right? Otherwise, because we don't want someone who's just gonna, you know, essentially be a, a lead collector. We want someone to go out there. But I think for your team, what you're talking about, the high S is, is awesome. And they have high I's as well. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they Yeah, like it's not just people. one, you're right, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And I have some high D's, but they also have a high I, a high S. Mm -hmm. I'm at 99D, 99I. Yep, and me so, too. <laughs> That's what Darren and yeah. I are, yeah. And so, you know, it, it just, it's different. It's like they're easier to work with, they care. And that's what mm -hmm. I want. I, I care. And I care about our clients and I want them to have the best service and I want to treat everyone like family and I want agents that do the same. Because I, you know, I'm in my 50s and I, when I come to work, I want to enjoy the people I work mm -hmm. with. I don't want to pull in and say, oh gosh, their car's here. You know, I don't want or that kind of Or they're calling, oh God, yeah. I don't want to take this call. I just don't want that kind of business That's at this good. point in my life. And so, you know, I really, you know, look at that. I train them, I coach them based off of communicating with people. Well, I, I think it's awesome to point out that it starts with you, right? In every organization, whoever is the, the face or the name, if you don't have that true focus on relationships, then the people on your team, your team members are not gonna have that focus. Therefore, they're not gonna have great relationships with clients. And that one deal that could turn into a lifetime of relationships right. just ends up stopping there as a transaction. So right. I'm, I'm really glad that we got to speak about relationships really quickly. So I know I wanna be sensitive and respectful of your time. Uh, you're a very, very busy person, so we <laughs> want to make sure we get some, some greatest hits out here. But really, what is it besides, and we might have just answered this question, to be honest, what is it about the, the Cantrell team that sets you apart from everybody else, whether it's in southern Missouri or across the country and other, in other markets? I think part of it is how learning-based our group is. Mm. Um, one thing that we concentrate on as a leader, what I concentrate on is their mindset. Because anyone can learn the skills necessary, right? Yeah. But they have to have the mindset that helps move them forward, moves their client forward. They have to know the right words to say and not say. And we talk about manifesting what we want, yeah. and, you know, all the time. And, and a lot of that is just the energy you put out and towards the words you say. Absolutely. You know, you can really guide your clients down a, a strong path or a weak path, depending on how you present things to them. Sure. And I think that makes us different. Um, we really concentrate on doing the best job for our client. And I, I know everyone wants to do that. But, you know, we just don't dramatize situations. Mm -hmm. We go to them with solutions, not problems. And we just really concentrate on what that looks like. And um, I just think how learning-based we are it makes us very, very different and how much we stay ahead of the market with technology and systems. Well, you have to today. Yeah. It's, it's a definitely a multifaceted approach. Um, right. You can't just do the old school way. You can't just do the new school no. way. There has to be, I mean, you have to have many bullets in the chamber, so to speak, to make sure you're serving your clients. It's difficult to change systems all the time, but we do. You have to ev mean, evolve, and certainly. Evolving. If something yeah. doesn't work, you have to be brave enough to say, this didn't work, I'm gonna try something new to make sure that we're serving others. And even sometimes when it's working, and it's just time to add, that's go true. to a system that has something that's a little extra. Yeah. You know, And so they're really good about hanging with me through all of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love, I've, I've met several people here on the team. I think I've met 10 people total, and um, what you're saying is is absolutely gospel. It's truth. Yeah. Everybody I've met has been extremely hospitable. You can tell that they're all relationship based, mm -hmm. and that speaks volumes. So if you're a client and you're looking to buy or, or sell a home, and you speak with somebody on your team, whether it's a transaction coordinator or marketing or you or the office manager, everyone has that same approach of I'm here to serve and having the heart of a, a servant leader. Mm -hmm. I think is really really important no matter the role in the team. Yeah, and we're really, um, it's really important for us to keep people where they belong, like keep people in the right seat on the mm -hmm. bus. And so we really work at getting that person that's an expert in their their side of it, like our transaction coordinators, our rock stars. And we let our agents, that way, you know, agents typically, they need to get in front of people, right? That's what they're best at. They yep. need to get in front of people, help those people, and then they hand off the transaction to the transaction coordinator who's working with them on mm -hmm. that. And it just really allows them to do more transactions and really help their people. So we just really try to nurture people where they're at and help them do the best they can do. I love it. I love it. 
So if someone in the area wants to get in touch with your team to buy or sell a home or is just interested in asking some questions to set up a future uh, transaction, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, my email is michelle at Cantrell, R-E, as in real estate, dot com. So the two L's in Michelle. Awesome. And that's the easiest way. Are, do you know what your socials are? It, is it just on Cantrell Real Estate? Just find on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, Cantrell Real Estate. Yeah, on, um, it's usually Cantrell, R-E, on Instagram. And we have Facebook. And we have it all. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. This has yeah. been a pleasure. I, I appreciate Thanks your time so much. Absolutely. Guys, this has been the Always Be Cool podcast. Hanging out with Bobby Kerr, not Darren Copeland today, and Michelle Cantrell of the Cantrell uh, Real Estate here in Springfield, Missouri. You guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.